do one will be of course the eye. All right, then you're gonna have the nose. And then we'll have the lips. And then we're gonna have, which I think is the easiest of all the features, still here, the ear, there it is, a good old ear, okay, just a lot of shape, so we'll hang these up, the best ones, but um, you have your handouts, um, and Lance through those, there's some great info on these handouts, it's all the best packets I've found over the years, over the last 30 years, just and put them all together. So there's a couple of things here we need to kind of, we're making some new copies. Don't take these with you. There's a couple of changes we've got to make on, but just you can kind of glance through those today to help you. But you'll see like, there's page, there's some pages where you'll do two eyes, two noses, two lips, and two ears in here. So that's gonna be kind of what you're gonna do uh, tomorrow on this, okay? So pay close attention, and then once we, we get this, you'll, you'll be ready to go, okay? And uh, we'll explain some more on uh, Wednesday, on, do the form and proportion of the face. Now, as you look at it, turn to this second page. Okay, the one that's got the eye and the nose. Okay, um, there's some little small caption and print on there. You want to read. There's some really good information on that part that you want to uh, look at. It's got some good info there. Like eyelashes are thicker towards the outer edge. You know the iris. Uh, the deepest color in the iris will be around its outer edge. Things like that. Okay, better bit on the eye. Um, now, as you draw the eye, you get into these facial features. Like I said, that's got to be kind of the first one. And then there's different shapes on the eye. Now, one thing to think about is a sphere, a circular shape. Okay, it's a great way to start the eye. Get that shading around it. Get into that eye socket. You know, when you're drawing that skull, then you can just build the eye around it. Okay. That's a perfect way to start. Our Van Gogh relative we had years ago, and we'll use his hand out on Wednesday a little, and I'll show you that one. He starts with a circle for the eye. That's how he starts it, the sphere. And then uh, the whole eye itself is a ball shape. So take your hand and kind of put it on your eye like that, kind of grip into your eye. Now if you were to just rip that out of your skull, which you don't want to do, you can feel, just feel that. Can you feel it? It's like a ping pong ball in there, right? It's like a, a, a golf ball or a ping ball, pong ball shape that you, you have there. The whole eye is a circle. It's a round ball. It's not just that circle iris part. The whole thing is a, a ball shape. But, so you gotta, that's how you got to think about it, right? Um, so as you're looking at this, let's draw the shape. Kind of an almond shape. The eye has an almond shape to it, okay? You get the top part. And it's thicker towards this outer edge. We're going to say the nose is going to come down right here. So the kind of the eyeball part sets into the outer edge a little bit. So you're going to have it kind of thicker right here, okay? And then it's going to curve up and go into the inside corner. Now, there's three things people forget when they're drawing an eye. Number one is right here, called what? Anyone know? Starts with a T. The teardrop. teardrop. That's good. It starts with a teardrop. Now, so it's a little curved little area right there. So the tears come out right there. That's the teardrop, okay? Now, so the teardrop. Some people have it more distinct than others. Look at your neighbor and just see. You might be able to see it on one person, and the other person you may not see it as much, but it has a little dip in it right there. Okay? That's the teardrop. Now, that's kind of the shape, a little of an almond top shape on the eye. Now, again, that whole thing you want to think about is that big circle, right? Is that sphere. It's not just that, you know, not just the iris. So you got the iris right here is inside there. So you've got the iris. That's just part on top of the, the ball shape. That's not just the only part of the circle, you know, the circle or the ball. It's like, it reminds me of my, a friend of I had in seventh grade in basketball. And he, unfortunately, had his eye shot out by a BB gun when he was a little kid. And he had a glass, what you call a glass eye. So he could take it out. And he could just take it out and show you. But it was just a, you know, a ping pong ball. I mean, it was about that size. And uh, I'm going to tell you one story. Uh, we're in a game, seventh grade in basketball, and we're going down to court, and he gets fouled. This is right in the actual game. And then he falls, hits his head on the court, and his, his eye literally rolled out on the court. And, <laughs> and uh, the other player on the other team is like, still in the ref. He didn't foul. I, you know, I didn't foul him. And the uh, official goes, yeah, he knocked his eye. So, I mean, 
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, but it's just a ball shape. That's what we're trying to get a point. It's a ball shape. Now, so the iris, that's if your eyes are blue, green, brown, okay? What's inside the iris? Anyone? What's inside here? Pupil. Start with a P. Pupil. Pupil. The pupil is right there. So you got the pupil. Now that's going to be, if you're painting the portrait, the only part, the only reason you would ever need like black paint on nearly anything is this to put the pupil in. Okay? Otherwise you're going to use other colors to get those. The darks. But, but the, that would be the only place. Now in a drawing, of course charcoal, you got your charcoal, you got your, in a, in a, in a you could want this to be the darkest spot of the entire portrait is the pupil. So if you're just doing graphite, what pencil would you use? Would you use a 2H or a 6B to get that dark? 6B. You want to use the Avenida 6B, the darkest pencil you got. Now, inside the pupil, though, the other thing, remember I said there's three things you forget. Teardrop, the next one, highlight in the pupil. Okay? So here's what I like to do. Maybe you at least need one. You, you may see a picture. You may not see it. When you look in the mirror, you may not see it on your photo. But uh, always kind of add it in there. If you forget it, there's other there's little tricks you can do. But I like to just kind of start and put some little dots. You get more than one. Okay? Then shade it in. And again, you press down really hard. You want this blacked out right here. This is the darkest part of the entire portrait, the pupil. Okay? This is gets the value of the darkest part. Now, once you shade that in, let's say you shaded that in here and you forgot to put the dot. Okay? A couple things you do. Uh, you could take white out, like liquid paper for a little while. That's not the best thing, but you could do that. It doesn't look bad. A white wash, a little dot. I've done that. Those are things you do. And one other thing I've done before I'll do a lot too, is if I forget to, to save the little uh, highlight, I'll just connect it to the side. I'll say, just move it over a little. Just kind of move it over like this, and then just kind of create a little highlight like that. And then let's say, you know, this is the, yeah, here. So, so you just kind of create a little highlight to the side. But that's another way. So if you you know forget it here. But anyway, anyway, you like some people like to do it that way anyway. But because uh, sometimes it is kind of on the side or you know in the eyes. So, um, but again, the iris is where your eyes are blue, they're green, brown. This is where you would color that part in. Okay, or in your case, just shade it as your pencil. Uh, now the uh, you're drawing, it. but uh, it's thicker toward like the, the caption set towards the outer edge. Right? Now even if your eyes are light. Like light blue or light green, you're going to still have that line's going to be dark. Pupil still going to be black. Okay? Now, the hair color, your hair color reflects in your eyes. And your skin color reflects in your eyes. 98% of the time. So if you look around the room and you see someone with dark hair, you're probably going to have darker eyes. You know, not, not every time, but a lot of times. Dark hair, darker complected, going to have darker eyes. Look around the room, you'll, you'll see it. Now, if you got light blonde hair, you may have... Again, not always, but lighter. You may have light blue eyes, for example, okay? So it says that your hair color does reflect in your eyes though, and in, the, in your skin tone. Uh, so that, that can make a difference in this overall shading, which, again, is the hardest part. Important. Now, um, now you have shading part, shadows. Now, all right, so the third thing people forget, one was the teardrop, two, highlight pupil, third thing. The eyelid, eyelid, right here. So that's when you took a sharpie and drew a line right there. Okay, that's the eyelid. Now, it look, it look at your neighbor. You might can see it. It's just like say right there. It's like someone just took a sharpie and drew a line right there. Okay, that's the eyelid. Now, sometimes you'll see it. You might see it right on top of the the eye right here. You may see it right on top. Now, Bern Hogarth on Wednesday or no on uh, later in the week we're going to see a little ten minute video where he turns the head, draws a three quarter view which is like the Van Gogh portrait and the Picasso over here, where you can see one ear, the three-quarter view. Now, he's going to just show it where the eyelid's on top. He's going to focus more on the lower eyelid, which is right here, the lower eyelid. So you'll focus a little more on it. I'm focusing a little more on the upper lid, since he does the lower one. Okay? But um, that's the eyelid, another important part. Now, that's not the eyebrow. The hair part, we'll show you that. The hair part is the eyebrow. So let's go up here for the eyebrow. Okay, and just do the hair part. The eyebrow usually grows in a horizontal direction, the hair, okay? Horizontal direction like this. Maybe curl up a little, but it's usually horizontal like this here. And a lot of times people will get this, they will get this too light. They draw this in too light a lot of times, okay? 
but it's horizontal direction, okay? This is the eyebrow, the hair part, okay? And again, some people will get this too, too light. I like to thicken it up at the bottom a little bit, you know, regardless of what color it is, and then get that. Now, so, and a lot of times the eyebrow is this dark, actually darker than the hair on top of your head sometimes. So just again, glance around the room, look at people, and see how that, that reflects. But just make sure you get it dark enough, okay? Okay, and that's the eyebrow, the hair part. So eyebrow, eyelids, that little line looks like a sharpie mark, and then of course the lower lid and so on. Now, the next part, the white part of the eye. Let's look at the white part of the eye. Now, if you look at your picture you're looking at, you're looking at yourself in the mirror, it just looks solid white. It doesn't look like there's any shading at all, right? But you've got to put shading. Let's go back to that circle again. You've got to get some shadow here around that corner. Okay, so you, you, you want to exaggerate it a little bit. Any point you're kind of shading a portrait, if it looks, whether it's you're looking in a mirror for shapes or you're looking at your picture you're drawing, you've got to make it a little darker than it looks. You can't shade too dark, okay? Never seen anyone shade too dark on a portrait. That's the main problem, you don't shade dark enough. But we're going to add it in, this white part of the eye. Look at this. We're going we're gonna to shade in where you don't really see that on your, as you look at it. But it's going to give a three, more of a three-dimensional look. Okay? Now, I don't like to thicken up this line here, too. Because the next part we're going to get into is the, uh, the um, eyelashes. Okay? The eyelashes. Again, I want to thicken up this part. Now, if it's a small portrait only this big, you're, you're not even going to see the eyelashes. If you just do a little small one. Now, one this big, you'll see the eyelashes. Okay? And... And they actually do grow all the way across. But like the little caption said, in your handout, you only see them, they're only thicker towards the outer edges. And usually the eyelashes are longer than you than you would expect. You can some people longer than others. But uh, now the one class I drew the eyelashes as they were going, uh, this one they're going downwards, kind of going straight out or down. Your handout has them both ways. And then this one, you can see they're growing, they're curled up. They're curled up. So what way are you gonna draw them here? Curled up or straight out? Or up. Curled up, okay. So I'll show them, show them through that one. Um, but again, if they're curled down, they just come down right over the top of the eye. Okay, now, so curled up, that's what we'll show. So they're gonna throw on the inside corner. It's very important to show that it's on the inside corner. Oh, what one, one thing before I forget those. I'm gonna shade it a little bit before I get to those. Uh, so a little bit on shading of the face, then we'll hit the eyelashes before you But Okay, you have, um, we talk about the eyeball part. Now, the feel underneath your eyebrow, the hair part, underneath the eyebrow, what do you feel there? Bone. That's, there's a bone. That's the orbital bone. Okay? It's the orbital bone. It's, so, as we went, as we talked about drapery, you remember? This is the orbital bone right here at the top. Okay? Now, as we talked about drapery, um, we said anything that kind of sticks out. Maybe it's a rock. Maybe it's a a collarbone, a bone or a rock, anything sticks out. There's a highlight in the shadow, right? So um, that's what you have here, the orbital bone. So you've got immediately underneath the eye brow, a, hit, a highlight, boom, highlight. Then you have, and it's usually right above the eyelid, the, the shadow part of that orbital bone. So let's put it right above, it, right here. We're going to put a, a shadow here, okay? Right above the eyelid. See that? Right above that line. So that's a bone right there. You got highlight. Check. Now, okay, let's go back and right here, you've got to get this dark. Now notice that painting by Elizabeth back there. You see that kind of purple and greenish colored uh, portrait? Look how dark those eye sockets go back in. That's not that's not over exaggerated. You've got most people don't darken this enough. So when I come around here, we're gonna darken this part up where that nose starts in, the eye socket, it gets it's really dark right there. Okay, you just really black this out. It's very, very dark. Okay? A lot of people don't get that part dark enough. Now um, and then underneath, now let's look at this part of the portrait to really get tricky. Again, portrait artists, the top of the world, a lot of times, are they even drawing the, the, the guidelines and stuff? Normally they're just tracing it off. Because that's the, that's the easy one. If you'll get that by the end of this week, then really all happen. The features, the proportions, the form. It's, it sounds hard, it's not. The hard part is shading. Like when we put them on the screen to critique them, when we stand back, we're going to say, they're all great, but they're just too good. They're not dark enough. You can't see them. So, so I've never seen anyone shade a portrait too dark, ever. Okay. 
usually they're not dark enough. So you can't, even though it may look like you're thinking, oh, it looks like it's got a beard or something. No, that's, that's you know, all equal out. You can't really shade it too dark, okay? People, that's the color too black. Now let's look at where the cheekbone, which is the hardest part of the shading. I'll hit this again Wednesday. The hardest part. Now we're getting into the cheekbone, this bone. The orbital bone at the top. Cheekbone right here where it sticks out. This is the called the zygomatic arch. The zygomatic arch right here. So this part is right here. Now underneath the, the lower eyelid, boom, again, you got an immediate highlight, highlight, boom. Little, little slight shadow under the lower eyelid. Okay, and then what do you got? You got that other bone, the cheekbone, so boom, highlight again, highlight again, and then the zygomatic arch right here, that other shadow comes in. That other shadow is coming in right there, okay? So this is where you get the other shadow. Again, you can't shade too dark. Now that's the other shadow. That, now the hardest part on a face, the hardest thing to do is that cheek area, this part of the face here. That's the hard part. If you're drawing a baby, that's what I mean, a little kid, it's very difficult. If you're drawing a, a model out of a glamour magazine, it may be all airbrushed out, it's really hard because you can't see anything to shade them. So that's why I'm saying if you get a light and shadow type portrait, an uh, elderly person, it's actually much easier. And it looks better anyway, but it's much easier to do. So that's that. Now the last thing on the eye, the eyelashes, if it's big enough to see. So let's curl them up. Okay, so right here again, going back to this, they're longer than you think, and they're curled upwards. Kind of flare them out like this on the eyelashes. And I'm going to take over and put some in there. But again, this is it. Now, notice how I'm starting on the inside corner there. See that little edge I'm starting on the inside? It's very important to do that. And then they start fading out. Even though they go all the way, you, you don't show them. You just kind of fade them out. You go this way there, okay? So the longer you think, they're curled up, okay? Now, how do you do the lower eyelashes? Again, they're not as, they're not as long, okay, as the lower ones. A little more they're not as long. So they're going to be right in here. Put some of the lower ones. Put in. And again, you know, you just turn the stickers over down there as well. Okay? And that, I believe, if I'm not forgetting anything, is most of the basics on the app. Okay? That's most of the basics that you have on the app. So any questions on the app? The most important feature. That's going to give you that likeness, even though. As you look at your grade sheet on this, we'll look at Wednesday, likeness isn't even part of the grade. You know, it doesn't matter if it looks, if you're looking at it, the picture, the mirror, the person, the model, you know, it'll, it'll look like, it's not gonna look like someone else. I mean, it'll probably look like them, but that's not even, that's not the objective. The objective is to do it right, right, not to go for the exact likeness. If you get the eyes though, you're gonna have a pretty good likeness, okay? So what would be next? If you go in line in order, what do you think? After the eyes. What would be the next feature? The nose. The nose. Okay. The nose has got to be next. So, so the nose. Let's put the nose. Down. Now, the nose, if you look through the handout, there's one technique, start with a circle. It's got two little circles on the side. And it kind of curls up like this. Now, I'm not crazy about that technique, but uh, that is one technique out there. Okay. And there's another one that Hogarth will use where he starts with kind of a geometric shape idea. He does a wedge for the nose. And then he kind of does a little trapezoidal shape, like this, and it comes back down like this. Then it kind of flares out like this, the wing part of the nose, like that. So that's a good technique for the nose. Now, when I first started portraits, and I'll show you one later next week, my self-portrait I did about around 1990 or something, and I got the nose too long. I didn't know anything about portraits. I didn't really do portraits in high school. Kind of skipped over that. Yeah, this is why this class is big. You don't want to skip over anything. The portraits, like I get people that didn't paint, they didn't do portraits. You know, it's the most important thing you do. So I started off, in my younger days, I would start at the top of the nose with that little wedge and I would start down. But I, I kept going, I made the nose too long. So it took away a little the look, lightness part, but I got the nose too long on the first two or three portraits I did. But what I do now, I like this technique, you can't even use any of the ones, but I like to start at the bottom of the nose, okay? I'll get the bottom shape of the nose. I'll start with a little thing like this. Okay? A little, little kind of little U shape like that. Then, so I'm just getting basic bottom shape of that nose. The nose is wanted to shape it. So you go, you need a little cap that it has on that. But right here, you need to curve it up like that. And then the other side, same way. Curve it up like that. So I'll kind of start 
at the bottom shape of the nose. That's how I'm, I'm, I'm doing it now. Okay? And it keeps me to get the it helps me get the proportion. Now, the next thing, the nose has a spherical shape at the bottom. Kind of a round shape if you read those captions. It's got talk all about a light circle again. And it's something to come back to that, that sphere shape. It was a big reason for doing the sphere shading that earlier on. Um, so here's the, the circle, kind of lightly, okay, the tip of the nose. Now I'll build it up, the bridge of the nose, onto the side of that, okay? So right here, and you kind of think of the light and shadow again. And it goes back into the eye socket right here, real dark. Other side, and then a little lighter on. We'll make the light come in this way. Going back into the eye socket here, okay? Okay? So, I'm doing the little sphere part, kind of sphere that on over there, yeah. okay. Now, the other part we want to think about is the, the nostril. You don't want to overemphasize the nostril, though. The nostril, and the nose by itself it does look kind of strange, but the nostril, that one, our friend in art school, is, he had nostrils like this, that went kind of down like that. Normally, you don't see that too often, so that would be more important. Normally, they're kind of slightly slanted. So the nostrils will be more like this, but don't overemphasize them. Yeah, I mean, if you're looking up at a person, you'll see them more. If they're kind of tilted down, you're not going to see them much, you know, like this is straight on. Now, the hard thing on the nose, remember the Da Vinci copy you did? Remember the head of the Virgin? Okay, that three-quarter view, the tilt, the nose was difficult. On that. Okay, that was the hardest part. But right here, you've got, so we're just kind of, the straight on view is easier. Now, the Picasso, the Van Gogh, you can kind of see the nose is there. A little more tricky, but he'll, uh, the Hogarth will also uh, talk about that too. That's how you do those, uh, the field is pretty cool. Now, one thing on the nose is shading around. Let me show you this other thing. Coming down a little cleft, cleft, or whatever they call that. Coming down, you got, helps you to breathe, not suffocate, that's normal, two little lines. Look at your neighbor again, and see, do they, some people, it's more distinct than others. How can teardrop? Do you see, you look around and just see if you see these two lines. That's going to lead you into the lips, okay? This is going to lead you into the lip right here, okay? Again, there, kind of flares out the upper lip. And it's going to, again, the eyes were here, right? You have to go, tear the eye down, that gives you a leap. Okay, we'll get to that. Now, let's shade the, around the nose. The nose sticks out, so there's a shadow. We talked about a shadow on one side a little bit, but also underneath, underneath it. It sticks out, you got to put a shadow there. you got to get a shadow underneath that nose. Okay, and there you go. That's basically all there is on the note. It's just a lot of shading. Got the bridge of it here coming in, but I mean, any question on the notes? There we go. Okay, so the notes. Now, the next one. The more like we'll hang these up, and you'll have this great video to refer back to. But what do we got next? Lips. Mouth for lips. Okay, mouth or lips. Okay. Think of the mouth as an M shape, the upper M. Think of the lower lips, a W. Okay, that's a good way to think about it, especially the upper one being a man. You don't see the W as much, but that's good. Now, the lips can be tough. Like I said, that one lady, portrait artist, top ten in the world, she would do her portrait, she would save the lips until the very end. She was charging nearly $100,000 a portrait. But to get the lips, it's very difficult, and you'll see her on the video in a few days. But look at this. You've got to get the lips out around those teeth. Three-dimensional, okay? You've got to get the lips working around that. You, the, a lot of people that draw the lips, a lot of the features, it looks like they're pasted on. So that's what you got to do. All right, so let's look at the shape of kind of the lips here. Um, all right, here we go. Now, you start with that nose, right? You start with that two little lines. That, that's the plus, and you know the exact name for that. Coming down, and then this is the nose here. Okay. Nose goes up, and that's all. Now, so you got the two little eyes. Again, some sort of distinct than others. Everyone kind of has it a little bit. Now, so right here, you're going to start a little new shape. You got the eyes, of course, up in here somewhere. Now, how wide are the lips? Anyone know? How wide are the lips? It's all in your hand out, but the center of the eye, pupil of the eyes, just straight down. So let's say the eyes right here. Put it down, put it up. Eyes right there, come down, put it up. Now, I, I like this, put it down. That way, if it's off, you can erase it easy. Some people like a bunch of guidelines stuff, right? You put the little dots. I mean, I'm not a big fan of that grid system, and you know, I'm not a fan of those either. So, but you get all those lines erased, and it's just 
I think I use a Greta, it just trades it off. Okay. 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 I'm not good. Now, so, um, because the bottom line, the hardest part, isn't any of this. It's the value, the shading, the shadow. That's, that's the skill. That's the hard part. I mean, that's the main part. Now, but again, let's go back to it. How, you're going to flare this upper lip out. Flare it out. Flare it. Okay? It's like that. Kind of flares out like that. That's the upper lip. Now, here's the main mistake on the lips that flattens it out. Number one mistake. People will go, even, and you see it this way. You know, as I'm looking, this is kind of the way it looks. You can see it straight across. But for instance, right here, we did that line right there for the bottom of the upper lip. See, that doesn't look right, right? So that flattens it out. So that's incorrect. Even though it may be how it looks when you look at someone, that may be how it looks. But here's what you got to do. So you got to kind of exaggerate a little bit. Kind of like you do the shadows. Make them a little dark. Here's what you got to do. You got to kind of, okay, for instance, you're going to repeat the, the same line. Maybe not as much, but you're going to repeat it. So we're doing the bottom of the upper lip. That's what we're doing. Everyone with me? Bottom of the upper lip. Okay? That's the bottom of the upper lip. Now, one of the things before we get on here, some people would like to divide the lips up into three shapes. Maybe the first shape, a little square, which is going to be right here. Then they'll put two, a sideways triangle on each side. And they go like that. So that's one other way to do it. But anyway, so you can kind of think about the other way. Now, so this is the upper lip. Now, the shading on the lips usually go in a vertical fashion like this, right? If you look at them closely, you don't overdo that, but that's kind of how they look, right? The, the lines on the lip. But again, out on the outer edge, it's going to be just nearly just dark out. The upper lip is always in shadow. Upper lip's always in shadow. I'll kind of show a little more here. It's always in shadow. Even if you don't see it that way. And if you look around the room, you may not see it that way. But that's how you have to draw it. Okay, so that's how you have to do it. Because the lower lip has the highlight that gives the lips the shape. And they're kind of tied together with a little suture effect kind of right here. And then how do you get that bottom lip? Okay, we mentioned the, the W shape. You can do a little notch here. Okay, so kind of start. It's not as distinct. And then you just kind of curve it up like this. Okay, for the lower lip. Okay. So this is the lower lip. So you can just end it right there. You wouldn't have to put any shading at all on the lower lip because this is the highlight. So you could just leave it like that. What I'll usually do a lot of times, I like to do it on the sides because it is wrapped around the, the teeth, the three dimensional part teeth. I'll kind of put a little, few little you know, shadow right there on the edge at least, and then maybe a few, but mainly this, this stays white. I'm on that lower lip, there's nothing there. So how do you get it to look three dimensional? Well, you got to shade it, right? You got to put some shadow here, okay, underneath it. You got to get shading, and this is big. Where you, you it's not we're putting a beard on anyone, or just or, or dark shadow. We're, this is there. Once you blend it all in, it'll it'll look right, okay. Again, you can't. I've never seen it. Never thirty years shade too dark on a portrait. Okay, usually the problem is not dark enough. Come on, show me. Look at my kids' portrait they did. It'll be all perfect, everything on it, except this thing here. The number one thing, not dark enough. This is what it is. Never dark enough. Okay. So your goal, your goal is to make it look like a black and white photo. Photo realistic. We're doing these real. Like one person had a question last hour. They said, can we kind of abstract the portraits? Not in this class. No. The first times you do these, the first few times, you want it to be this realistic, you know, basic. Formal. You don't want it to be, you know, creative on this. One. Now, as you get into advanced art and so on, you can be more creative, right? Then you do that. You got to get this basic part down first. You can't be. I mean, Picasso was that trick, but he he could draw the yeah. anyway. You got to get the basic yeah. first. It's very important to get that understanding. So, hey, the shadows. It's a big shadow. It's a big shadow, but it's there. The lips stick out. Okay. You talk about shadow under the nose, right? Maybe a little on the top, not as much. But you're going to have some quite a bit of shading around here on these lips, okay? So that's the lips. Now let's do the last part, the teeth. But you're normally not going to do this. But let's show you just how to do the teeth you do. But the teeth, you're not going to see. One thing that giveaway on the teeth is, if you see teeth, you, you know it's, if you're a judge, you know it's copy. So that's a that giveaway of copy. Because the self-portrait in the mirror, Will there be teeth? No, normally not. You're not going to see teeth. I mean, as I look around the room, if I do see someone's teeth, what are I seeing? Only, only the upper teeth. You never see the really the bottom teeth. Either. 
normally you just don't see the eyes. I'll show you how to do, if you, well, let's say you do that, say the Bob Marley over there, looks like you can see his teeth, right? You just see the upper teeth, okay? But, so that is a dead giveaway, it's a copy too. So look for your old pictures if you can, or if you want to be a famous person, the elderly, people with shadows, those are best. And that's again, just for practice, because the only way to do a self-portrait, a self-portrait is only with a mirror, not a photo. Please don't do it with a photo, okay? And, and don't do a photo grid system, please. That's not how you do it. Once that's how you do it, then that's when I stop, okay? I can guarantee you the colleges, they don't do it that way, they don't see it that way. It's just the way it's done. Yeah, you so do it right here. Okay, all right, here's what you got. Now, the teeth, the upper and the bottom, let's see it right here again. Let's put the bottom lip in, but again, you're not gonna normally you need to know this one. And then the upper teeth, you just see the upper teeth. Okay, you dark up a little corner right there a little bit. You're only gonna see the upper pretty much, okay? And then the shadow maybe on them, you don't have that white teeth here. And then, uh, that's kind of how you do this with teeth, if you sell the teeth. You, oh, one other thing too, make this line thick right here, where the lips come together, because it's over those teeth. That sticks out in front of the teeth. It's thick in that bottom line there, where it sticks out in front of the teeth. So that's kind of how you would do the teeth, but normally you're not gonna have really see Okay, any question on the mouth and lips? All right, the last one, what are we talking? The ear. The ear. Now, again, and this is the part of the class where I'd say, unfortunately, we have to say, if you can't draw an ear, I mean, you're not going to draw a whole lot of much of anything, but I don't want to sound negative, but you probably need to start from the beginning and start over, because this is very simple at this part. I'm just being honest, okay? The ear, it's very easy to draw. To both the ear, okay? You just look at it, the shape. It's a very simple shape. Now, I don't have... I, I ordered one time these, these plaster cast models of the things, all the features which are nice about this size, white, three-dimensional, they'd be good. Now, when you draw your features, use your handouts to look at, look at your neighbors, uh, look at your phone, your computers for pictures, or whatever you're going to do when you're just drawing them. Make them up or whatever. I'm just kind of making them up here. But it would be easier if you was looking, you know, I could do a little better job than looking at them. But, but I think those plaster cast models, sometimes are still stolen, I guess. We got them. But anyway... Uh, but that's that's what you want to do. But the ear, it's just looking at the shape. Ball. So it's a backwards kind of a C shape. Sort of a question mark C top looking shape for the ear. Now, so if you want to find a picture of an ear to kind of go about here, let's look through and find one. In the shape, okay? Here's one here. Um, so here's what you do. And then this is the last one. How much time? How are we doing on time? Um. Okay, here we go. This is the ear. You want to hear? Here we go. Don't stop it off. Like one of the artists doing that. And I did get word from the uh, that that traveling exhibit may be coming back. Oh, yeah. Are you taking good care of the ear and the ear, so we may get to see the real ear of Van Gogh on the traveling exhibit. All right, so here we go. As we get the ear, I'm just, I'm not saying much on it because it's just feeding in the shape. And that's all it is. It's not hard to take the draw. It's out of the edge here, maybe. Uh, if you get anything, I do want to check it. Are you hairy? And, uh, there you go. There is the ear. The key on the ear, though, is to shade in the inner ear, get it dark enough. That's the only thing I ever see on that. People don't shade the inner ear dark enough. It gets really dark. But um, that's your ear. And uh, any questions now on any of the, the four features that we have? Again, um, that's bad. maybe a little too much space at the bottom. But overall, Pretty good. Any last minute questions on the features? There we go.